Take your punch cards and run to your electromechanical device as we are about to decipher Neil Stevenson's first foray into historic fiction with his monumental novel Cryptonomicon. The genre classification of Cryptonomicon is quite diverse and can vary depending on who you ask. It has been categorized as science fiction, historical fiction, cyberpunk, thriller, war and fantasy novel among others. Personally I have reservations about labeling it as fantasy and to a lesser extent cyberpunk. I would describe it more as a blend of historical fiction and cyber thriller with elements of science fiction. Cryptonomicon was published in the year 1999, although it should also be noted that an excerpt was originally published in the short story collection Disco 2000, edited by Sarah Champion, which was already published a year earlier in 1998. Nevertheless, Cryptonomicon marked the beginning of Neil Stevenson's trend of publishing novels with exceedingly large page counts, with its substantial 1152 pages. Therefore, reading it on an e-reader might be more comfortable for your fingers and wrists. Technically, Cryptonomicon also marks the beginning of a series, but we will discuss this in more detail later. Cryptonomicon earns a hard rating on the sci-fi Mo scale, assuming that we actually apply this categorization in the first place, since many parts of the novel can be considered to be scientific reality at this point, with only very few exceptions. Furthermore, the historical fiction plotlines, which constitute a sizable part of the novel, defy this specific categorization completely. Although here, the rigor with regards to the accuracy of historic events could be another figure of merit, but I opted to not overcomplicate things unnecessarily. The scope of the narrative setting is truly vast and encompasses basically the entire world during its two distinct timelines. To put it very brief, the first plot being a contemporary treasure hunt, or at least in the 1990s it was contemporary while the second plot describes the increasing importance of cryptography throughout World War II. However, just as a cautionary interjection, this plotline contains fictionalized events and characters, but does not fulfill the necessary requirements to be categorized as alternate history. Neil Stevenson uses these settings as a canvas for a quite interesting and unique way of storytelling, where he may introduce readers to the world of cryptography, its mathematical underpinnings, its practical applications, the evolution of mechanical, electromechanical and electronic equipment that come in handy in this topic, as well as somewhat unexpected interludes, such as musings related to the origins of various sexual preferences as one example. This is then further seasoned with a plethora of the, at this point, trademark characters that Neil Stevenson frequently employs in his fiction. Cryptonomicon is probably one of his most iconic works in this regard, although there have been criticisms related to the characters in this novel as well, something we will discuss later in more detail. In terms of critical acclaim, Cryptonomicon was able to secure two awards, while at the same time being nominated seven times in total. In particular, it won the Prometheus Hall of Fame Award in the year 2013 and the Locus Award for Best Science Fiction Novel in the year 2000. Its popular reception is impressive, with a combined rating of 4.3 out of 5 stars based on thousands of reviews, Cryptonomicon manages to beat the already positively rated The Diamond Age and Snow Crash. The narrative in Cryptonomicon spans, as mentioned previously, two pivotal eras. 
World War II and the late 1990s, where the first internet boom collides with global financial turmoil originating in Asia. Within the crucible of World War II, we encounter Lawrence Pritchard Waterhouse, a brilliant codebreaker for the United States Navy. Waterhouse navigates a clandestine world where Allied intelligence conceals its triumphs in cracking access cryptographic codes. Alongside him is the seasoned United States Marine Sergeant Bobby Shefto, whose battlefield experiences in China and Guadalcanal serve as a formidable asset to the unit's operations. Together, these two orchestrate intricate schemes behind enemy lines, weaving a web of deception to mask their cryptographic breakthroughs. In parallel, we are introduced to Japanese soldier Goto Dengo, whose involvement in a mysterious project in the Philippine mountains takes an unexpected turn. Fast forward to the late 1990s, where Randy Waterhouse, grandson of Lawrence, embarks on a new, profitable venture in East Asia alongside his old friend Avi Halabi. Yet, amidst the promise of progress, shadows from the past emerge, threatening to unravel the carefully laid plans. As old vendettas resurface and hidden agendas come to light, the characters find themselves ensnared in a web of deceit and danger, where the pursuit of wealth and vengeance collide with the inexorable march of history. Cryptonomicon, the beginning to what can retrospectively be termed the crypto series, alongside RIMD and Fall or Dodge in Hell, technically also is part of the expansive Baroque trilogy as well. However, its integration feels more like a savvy embellishment in the Baroque trilogy, contrasting the series' later installments, RIMD and in particular Fall where it takes on the guise of a gimmick to elevate the latter novels, in a way letting them shine in the glory originating in Cryptonomicon. Obviously, Cryptonomicon stands firm in its own right, its narrative prowess undiminished by the other novels. But this is something to keep in mind when hearing the talk about a crypto series. Within its pages, predominantly male characters take center stage, a characteristic that has garnered criticism by some individuals who missed better developed female protagonists and side characters. Yet, it is essential to recognize that this is not an indictment of Neil Stevenson's ability to craft compelling female characters, at least on par to his male protagonists. In previous works, like The Diamond Age, and subsequent ones, like Seven Eves, Stevenson demonstrates his capacity to portray complex and engaging female leads. The perceived dearth of such characters in Cryptonomicon arises most likely not from any failing on Stevenson's part, or more ludicrously an aversion to women, but rather stems from the historical and thematic constraints of the narrative, set amidst the backdrop of World War II and the late 1990s technology scene, the subject matter itself presents challenges in incorporating well-rounded and believable female characters in a sizable number. In addition, Cryptonomicon emerges as a narrative primarily enticing to the technically inclined or those seeking adrenaline-pumping tales, particularly within its World War II chapters, where the plot brims with intrigue and action. These boundary conditions will obviously lead to Cryptonomicon being aimed mostly at a male audience. Beyond its literary merits, Cryptonomicon boasts a notable cultural footprint, particularly in tech circles. For instance, Peter Thiel, in his book Zero to One, underlines its significance by revealing its status as required reading during the nascent days of PayPal. Cryptonomicon's relevance is further evidenced by its mention in Mike Judge's comedy TV series Silicon Valley. You're that guy. What guy, exactly? The brooding, arrogant guy who refuses to take orders? Self-taught coder who looks down on anyone who's taken a class? You're probably an atheist or something more contrarian. You claim to be an anarcho-capitalist, but you work here and pay taxes. You've probably read half of Neil Stevenson's Cryptonomicon, and it's about 50-50 whether you own a snake. His girlfriend owns a snake. 
I finished Cryptonomicon, and you easily could have just looked in my file. Obviously, in this particular case, Mike Judge uses Cryptonomicon to lampoon the reverence of Cryptonomicon in tech circles within Silicon Valley. Furthermore, the storyline set in the 1990s serves as a valuable window into the zeitgeist of the era, offering insights into the tumultuous landscape of the first internet boom and the burgeoning tech society in Silicon Valley at the turn of the millennium. Through its narrative lens, readers are transported to a pivotal moment in history, providing an understanding of the forces shaping the digital age. Overall, Neil Stevenson's Cryptonomicon stands as a significant milestone, not only within his own oeuvre, but also in the broader realms of technology-focused and historical fiction literature. However, prospective readers might benefit from familiarizing themselves with Stevenson's shorter, or to be more precise, earlier works before diving into this extensive novel. With over a thousand pages to traverse, having a sense of Stevenson's style and thematic interests can help ensure a more enjoyable reading experience. This way, you will have a rough idea of whether you appreciate this approach to storytelling and the types of narratives he constructs. If you liked this video, you may also enjoy the other reviews and content on my channel. Feel free to leave a comment if you want to discuss the novels or if you want to suggest other books that I should review in the future. Please consider upvoting and subscribing, it is much appreciated. Thank you for watching and until next time.